Walk in his ways, in pet voice. Walk in his ways, in pet voice. Walk in his ways, in pet. Walk, walk in his way. Tune in to get your mind right. Tune in and let your soul glow. We already hit the top charts. Look, you really ready? Let's go. Walk in his ways, in pet voice. Walk in his ways, in pet voice. Walk in his ways, in pet. Walk, walk, walk in his ways. That's gonna be the host. And a C and a C go host. Go say, go say, go host. Run time, go host. Walk in his ways, in bad voice. Walk in his ways, in bad voice. Walk in his ways, in bad Walk for walk in his ways. Going in the kitchen, my way. Going in the little show, bro. We already hit the top drop. This is really ready. Let's go. recorded today is wednesday october the 5th 2022 welcome to walk in this way impact was podcast i'm your host Furman jackson jr joining me tonight is guest co-host phoenix sapphire out of the dfw area tonight i guess is an entrepreneur wellness advocate stand-up comedian has a following of 7.4k on instagram 550k on tiktok she has the title queen of reliable content she is joining us here tonight on the West Coast. It's a, it was a birthday week. She took time out of her busy schedule. She wasn't um, being funny. She wasn't like being Sadidi, but she really gave this guy a chance to interview her on the podcast along with Fina Sapphire, who I guess co host tonight. I met her at the Dallas Boss Magazine bruncheon um, last, was it last, last month. We didn't really have a deep conversation. It was kind of like a hit and miss, swap information, and then that was it. So that's how it all came about, reached out to her. And we got the con- we got the interview set up, and I'm very excited for her hanging out with us here tonight. Before we get started, I want my guest co-host to introduce herself. I know I missed her name, but I wanted to introduce herself. It's all there's no who she is, what she got going on. So, Phoenix, go ahead and take it away. All right. So to the people who know me, uh, I am Phoenix Sapphire. Uh, brand ambassador for DFW Music. Um, always networking in the city, always working on things. We got a few events coming up. Um, I'll kind of get in more towards the end. Uh, but we do have the Heart of the City coming up in uh, November. I'm very excited to meet you, uh, Miss uh, Shante Coulet. Did I get it right? No. It. <laughs> Close. <laughs> no. You got it good. You, got it. you, did, you did well. <laughs> okay. No, Perfect. very excited. You did well. <laughs> good, good. Um, I aspire to be a mo- motivational speaker. Um, I do poetry, uh, getting to where I'm getting on the stage more than just sitting down and talking to people. So um, to meet someone who has gone from that business to, you know, you met, managed multiple businesses and comedy, um, I'm just very humbled to, to speak with you tonight. Definitely. Uh-oh, I think y'all froze. Can you see me? Yeah, I think she froze. All right, so all right, when she get back on, like I said, we're very excited about everybody being on with us tonight. This is a very special yeah, edition. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Like I said, we're very excited. I know you do a lot of great things in the city of Phoenix. Um, we're promoting, producing, you name it. You do a lot of quite getting right from getting around the city, of course. And like I said, we're waiting until uh she to get back with us. I know like she freezed up on our end. Yeah. But like I said, definitely. Um, but that tonight, <laughs> yeah, that West Coast, right? So, right. So as soon as you jump back on, we're going to get get on that popping with the show tonight. And like I said, we thank everybody for hanging out with us. Once again, we are live streaming right here tonight on Facebook Live. So we ask everybody to like, comment, 
share, leave your comments, get the hearts up, get the thumbs up, get the cares up. And by the way, as of the other day, I became official monetized here on Facebook. Congratulations. So, oh, appreciate it, of course. Good. Seeing dedicated staying consistent. So also, if you're looking at it right now on live streaming right now, you're going to see it's under the, underneath the screen, you're going to see a star. So I do have a star. So if you want to hit that star, gear towards that star, go right ahead. It is under the, under the show tonight as we live streaming right now, of course. Like I said, we're still waiting on uh, Shanti to get back on with us. I know technical difficulties on, it, on her end, but I'm very excited. I know Phoenix, we got the uh, Saturday Night Live Part 3 coming up. Which is yeah, going to be exactly. October the twenty second. Uh, we're going to be talking about dating. We're going to talk about relationships. I know you was on. I love the, it. <laughs> and I'm glad you're going to be on part of the third. Was you was on the second one? What was the first? It was so meaning we were doing. But, yeah, um, it was good. It was. It, it's a lot of good discussions. That's what I like about your show. Is you know the topics that y'all go over need to be discussed out here because a lot is going on in our city. Right, and it is. And when it comes to the content of the men, women, uh, the relationship. There she goes. That dynamic, right? Yeah. So we have to really get it back on point, and I believe that's what it is. Like last night' episode was very great. A uh, big shout out to the Hernandez family with Elijah the barber, her father. Um, great family. I love how the father is involved with his family. I mm. love that, and I and I respect that because we need to see more men like that. When it comes mm-hmm. to the family, I know y'all do y'all thing, women. When it comes to the family, but seeing a man in the forefront, being Did that, you see that statue um, that they were p- posting around on TikTok and Facebook of like the largest stat- statue in Africa, uh-uh. being the, the family, the father holding the son and and the the wife. Um, I have to send it to you, but it was very beautiful. You know, as a representation representation of our people. Awesome. And like I said, that's what we need to see more of. And I know I guess it's bad. We have to go no, honey, we'll get more into that. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Our honor queen of the evening. I know you're out of town. You're on the West Coast. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience here on Walking This Way Impact Voice Podcast. Yes. Hi, everyone. I am Shanta Colette DeVille. I am located in Dallas, Texas. I am a multifaceted a personal lifestyle brand, uh, which includes a number of things. I am an author, a writer, a CEO. Um, You know, I retired from the Internal Revenue Service IRS last year. I'm a stroke and heart attack thriver, mother, wife, grandmother. uh, And I just, I love life. You know, I love life. I'm doing everything that I love in the moment uh, and just, taking it in. God has been just taking me to some amazing places and I'm on an amazing journey right now. So yeah, I'm, 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 I'm just an amazing woman. I have to say I was created by God. Um, so yeah. we're supposed to be amazing. Right. So yeah. That's and that's what, it's, and that's what it's all about, you know, being extraordinary. That's why part of the slogan here on impact was is extraordinary men and women who are doing extraordinary mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. Life is beautiful. We can make life wherever we want to be. You don't have to have that poor me mentality, that why me mentality, why I can't get ahead, all this other stuff. That's the mindset. But being determined, mm-hmm. being being driven, having ambitions, having goals, having vision. So we know that the Bible speaks that without a vision, the people perish. So you have to have a vision on where you want to go in life. We know what vision brings discipline. And you know what you're doing, where you're going, where you're headed. So you have a lot of things under your belt. You do a lot of great content. I send your Instagram. You do a lot of media um, stuff. You have something with your son as well. I love how you got your family involved and in what you got going on as well. And I know it's a title you go by, um, the Queen of Reliable Content. Why that title for? And what is and what does that and what did that originate from? So the Queen of Relatable Content. So my content is really based off of my life um, as as a mother, a wife, uh, an entrepreneur, everything, you know, working in corporate. So I distribute content that is relatable to me and I know that it's relatable to others, right? So it is genuine, authentic transparency. You know, I'm in a, it, it's about vulnerability, vulnerability, um, and 
and letting people see me for who I truly am. I know, you know, you get caught up on social media. Social media is so much about aesthetics and, and you know, this, um, this grind culture, you know, just, you know, the aesthetics of wealth and all this. And, and that's not everybody's, you know, that's not everybody's lifestyle. That's not everybody's thing. Um, and so I try to translate, you know, my negatives into a positive where people can also say, hey, me too. Um, I, I can relate to this. And so once I made myself the queen, my, my, the, the, the queen ability, uh, if it's not a word, I'll check the Urban Dictionary, we can see. But my queen ability um, in relations to my relatability comes from the access. It comes from my impressions. I have been able to cultivate a following that is very diverse. So I'm not only reaching, you know, black people, I'm reaching white, Hispanic, Asian, you know, you know, you, I'm, I'm in the UK, Brazil, you know, everywhere. You know, I, when I did my first big viral video, that was translated in almost 25 countries. So it said to me that is anyone hitting the market like I am? Like, am I, is, has anyone hitting these oppressions with such a diver because like life is life is the same regardless of your you know i won't say let me take that back but when it comes to raising children and things like that we can all relate to to having teenagers yeah. you know if you have teenagers you know if you have boys you know you know if you have a husband you know you know it's not all perfect so that's what it is to me it's about just being vulnerable in the moment and 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 using my comedic side to empower and inspire others. And that's what's up. Uh, Phoenix, you want to go ahead and jump on in? I'm being a gentleman, so go ahead, ladies first. <laughs> I, I definitely agree with that being vulnerable um, and giving, I tell that to artists all the time, like giving a piece of yourself, you know, you, you give your image and then they, your, your fans have nothing to really know you from or resonate with you. So that's, that's, that's amazing. Um, so I, I, I did uh, jot down a few questions just because, you know, you did say you were a forensic accountant. Um, do you, and you, you said you walked away from that or, or you no longer do that so anymore? Invo so voluntary and involuntarily. So mm -hmm. in 2019, um, I've been with the I, I had been with the IRS about 14 years, have about 17 years of total government. Uh, and I was, I had been having some health, health challenges since 2012 that were undetected due to the disparities in, in healthcare. Um, mm. there were, there were many issues and many things that I was going through that I was trying to relate to doctors that they just would not, um, support. And so me being resilient, I kept working, you know, you know, like I said, when you're sick and you have to do things, the bills don't stop. You know, the, the, the bills no, don't stop. Don't. <laughs> yeah. Um, fast forward eight years later, I was at my job, um, having an amazing conversation with my manager, laughing. The laughing stopped and I was collapsed on the floor and, and diagnosed hmm. with a stroke. Um, there was a lot of cognitive damage. Um, to my stroke, you know, and I had to do physical occupational therapy. In the interim, I was doing so many amazing things, hadn't gotten to comedy yet, but I was, you know, doing my nonprofit, you know, Pink Peppermint Project. And mm -hmm. uh, right. I was really involved in that organization and also trying to keep up a nine to five. And so, mm -hmm. really, it's a matter of God knowing where to use you best and him seeing where you need to go, right? And so God had to put a halt on one thing so I could prosper in another, right? Mm, um, that you so, see it that way, right, it's so, beautiful. And, and, and unless I had let, allowed God to do, to give me a stroke, give me a heart attack, I probably would have still been at my job, not unhappy because I did like the job. I had I had no complaints, but there was something better awaiting me on the other side. And so um, I decided I have had a wonderful management team that also saw where I was going and saw that it was more advantageous for me 
to be able to walk away with my job, be able to collect a check from my job monthly, um, and then be able to still support myself in any way I wanted to. And so I decided to support of my husband, who is absolutely amazing. He is a high vibrational person in my life and supports everything I do. Um, I, I, I can't remember the last time he's told me no. Um, but in this stage of life, which I call act two, this is act two of my life. What I call act two is the best part of my life. And to be laughing with a manager and five minutes not be la- not be laughing anymore and having my whole week planned out to not even having my entire two years, but having planning my week and then having my two years taken away from me in a five minute conversation, that changed my life. So I know I am going to live the best life and I am so content in everything I do. And like I said, I don't have any complaints. Like the song says, if God don't do nothing else for me, he's done enough, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just, you know, I, I still have my credentials and everything to always, cause I earn them and I always will keep them. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I, I truly love. Awesome. It's amazing to look at your hardships that way though, you know, because a lot of people fall on that hard time and get stuck there. But when you see it as, as still being God moving, even though you, you know, but but he's still moving in your life. That that's a testimony right there, and I commend yeah. you greatly. I, yes. Yeah, yeah. Really transformation doesn't come until you've gone through the struggle. Um, mm-hmm. I did. I just said this today on another podcast. Is that you know I always say that God is the biggest comedian that we know. Right. Mm-hmm. And sets up the premise. We don't understand it. Um, then the setup comes. We we we're like, okay, what is what's going on? The tags, we, we, you know, we're unhappy. And then the punchline comes. And then when you see the punchline coming, you're like, okay, God. This God is, right. yeah, this yeah. is what yeah. I'm looking for, God. Like okay, that. now I can say, look at God, and I can laugh. And right. I know you are. Because they say, like, tell God your plans and, and watch him and laugh. Like, right? So right. it's a true <laughs> sentiment of just, you know, allowing God. I had to say that for me, I felt like, what God spoke to me in that moment was if I cannot use you the way that I want to use you and for my people, what benefit do you have here? Mm. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not, a, if you're not coming, being an impact in someone else's life. Right. Right. That's and that's why I went through all this because now I have a, you know, I, I seen a post the other day that said, um, the reason why I win is because when I went through hell, I told God, thank you. Mm. Mm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's up right there. That's what's up. Uh, that's what's up. That's what's up. You know, what made me think about that as she was talking about that. It made me think about Genesis chapter 12 um, when God called Abram. He told him to leave your kinder, your, your homeland, leave everything, leave all the familiar territory and go to a land I would show you. And by him being obedient, that's what he did. That would make me think about your story. How leaving that familiar territory and go to a land that he would show you. And he did that. And people need to hear more of that. And people need to be more inspired by that. Because a lot of times people not, we all been there. We all lived in fear. We live in the fear of the unknown. We get so comfortable where we at. The first thing come to my mind, okay, I got to eat. I got bills to pay. Uh, I don't want this taken away. I don't want to lose that. But just the faith driven of everything, showing that faith. And let me ask you this, how has that been for you with your level of faith to then to now? And just being an example that where I was before, I'm in a whole other level now. So so anytime you go through any type of hardship, it is going to regardless of the magnitude of it, because we we can measure that at our at our own at our own level um it it pulls you up by the lapels right anytime you have to face your own mortality and you come close to death the conversation is different so my 
six. My faith is why I'm here now, because everything I do, I trust that it's for the purpose uh, or the plan that God has destined for me. So I go in saying, I know that God wouldn't give me anything that is going to destroy me. And I know the blueprint blueprint has been created. Like God said, I knew you before you knew yourself, right? Right. So you can run, you can run right or you can run left. <laughs> and either way, you know, there's gonna be an outcome. So right. as long as everything is you still blossoming, I know it's it's with God. And I and I always say, God, hey, if it's not right, you know, mm-hmm. cut it off immediately. Move it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Move. You know, and so and knowing that my success is not pre- predicated by a dollar is pre- it's predicated by the impact that I provide in everything I do. Right. So it's, it, it, it's nothing if I do what, what I, if I do what my what my Lord and Savior asked me to do, then I'm going to be blessed. Most definitely. Most and so, definitely. yeah. Because Isaiah, I'm just throwing our scriptures tonight. <laughs> Isaiah, you know, Isaiah uh, 119 <laughs> says this. If you be willing and obedient, you should eat the good of the land. And I yep. talked about this last time on the show. He'll take care of the big stuff. It's on a little something he wants to do. Willing and obedient. He's going right. to take care of that. All we have to do is just be willing and obedient. And he'll take care of the rest. Because right. everybody wants to eat the good of the land. Who don't want to eat the good of the land right. and just want to settle for less and just be where they at. And I know the woman of stature that you are, the the content that you put out, and um your 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 videos, your your stand up, your material. How does that all resonate together from your previous experience in life and you just took it, flip it into uh, what it is today? Yeah, it's just so so getting on social media and doing comedy was not intentional, right? So I've always been a, a very funny comedic person growing up. And comedy is something I always wanted to do. I grew up watching, I don't know how old you all are, but I grew up watching um the kids in the hall and and hee haw and Benny Hill, you know, Lucille Ball, you know, all these different shows that inspired me as an individual, right? And so at that point in time, whatever I desired, it wasn't meant to be in the moment, right? Right. And so fast forward, when God is taking me through the struggle and beating me up and, you know, getting me prepared to to fight the war, um, that's when everything starts coming into fruition and coming into place. So when I got on social media, I, you know, I saw a stroke, I, you know, I had the heart attack, you know, the one day my daughter said, Hey mom, you want to do a TikTok with me? And I'm like, what's TikTok? You know, what is that? You know, what is that? Right. And she's like, I want you to do a dance with me. And so I got on and I was in therapy at the time, uh, I was in physical and occupational therapy. I was like, sure. And I and I, I started enjoying it, and I started, you know, getting inspiration from other people. And um, one of my girlfriends is like, "Oh, you're an amazing storyteller. You should get on here and you know tell stories." And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know. You think people want to? I mean, that's funny to y'all, but I don't think it'll be funny to anyone else." And the the viral video that I did that was that is still trending from three years. I am Zoe shared it from three years ago that video was made at my lowest point. Mm -hmm. Um, Everything that I said in the video, you know, I talk about, you know, it was me without my wig. That was what I was feeling. That's what I was embodying. That's, that was the depression inside of me. And, Mm -hmm. and a lot of, you know, comedians are like that, you know, they deal with depression, they deal with, you know, it's, it's just, it's just hard when you're so creative you know, it it weighs on you. So when I did that video and it got the reaction it did, God was showing me, this is, this is who you are. It's not about how you look, it's your voice. 
is is what you're saying and how you're saying it. And now you're changing people's lives. Because it was just a matter of people just saying, I was I was in my bed and I was sad and I saw that video and it uplifted me. This is the best laugh that I've had all year. Oh my God, I feel the same way. I'm glad that you said this. It, so God was showing me. And so, and then I just kept doing it. And and I just started, like I said, everything that I discuss in the video is either my son normally is playing me as a child and I'm my mom in the video. <laughs> so everything is based off a real life scenario or other people's situations that I know of. So it's easy to create what's real and it's easy to exaggerate what's real. So I'm just creating real life. You know, it's not, you know, and, and, and I'm just translating it to to be funny, right? You know, so that's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, Finch, you want to have anything you want to add? Uh, I know earlier you said that you were a writer um, as well. So what um, type of content do you write about? So, so okay, so I started off as a blogger, but my writing comes from the the sketch comedy that I do. Um, yeah. It comes from, you know, the books that I'm, I got getting ready to come out. You will nice. see next year. Uh, but it's mostly focused on comedic writing. So it's, it's okay. focused on comedic writing. Um, I've been taking improv classes. Um, it is my goal um, to be, to get an Emmy one day, you know, like Quinta Brunson. And, you know, I have all these amazing stories that I've been putting on paper. Um, and that's why I'm here in L.A., you know, I'm in here. I'm here in LA um, to get a what is the word called to get acclimated to the environment. The of it. So, yeah. so rather than feeling like because you got such a big um, following from your video, you're still emerging in it. You said classes, improv, and 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 is that something that you would? suggest to people going into a, you know whatever they want to do just emerging themselves well it, it, it all depends on the person mm -hmm. because you know you have comedians that are successful like Eddie Murphy and and, and right and they've never taken a class right they, yeah. they just creative individuals and then you know now you have someone you you take the class and the class is just a bonus it just adds so it's me mm -hmm. I'm a scholarly person you know, um, right. so I work the left side and the right side of my brain. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> I, I want anything I do. I want to learn the the history behind it. I want to understand. Gotta make it make sense. Yeah, I want, <laughs> want it to make sense. Like you know, right. with the comedy now, I'm like, oh, I just found out. You know, comedy is just not about standing on the stage and telling jokes. Right. It, it's really about you. You you are what I read from Steve North. Um, it, not that that's Judy Carter, the, the comedy Bible, but Steve North has a, a book and I can't think of the name of the title, but it really, t it really goes into the, talking about your, your comedy character. Like, who are you on stage? Who are you trying to convey? What are you trying to convey to the audience? What, you know, what is the goal, you know? And so I'm this not so self-assured person who's really self-assured that's trying to just convince you that the world is really bad and everything that I'm going through is just terrible and it really is not, <laughs> you know? So, <laughs> so you, you, there's a selling point. And, and, and now that you, you look at other co com comedians, you see the art. Now I study them. Now I, mm -hmm. I, I see how they move and how they talk and how they, you know, turn syllables and, you know, it's just all kind of stuff. You can, you can go all day. And yeah, awesome. So it's all about being a student of the game. Basically. You can forever. You will be a student of comedy or whatever you do forever if you and want to grow. That's it. And, you know, as human beings, we, we, we're supposed to constantly involve as human beings. You know, some people stop involving at a certain stage of their life. But just listen to you talk, you're constantly involving in the things that you're doing, in your art, right. in your profession, to take it to the next level that it will, like you said, leave an impact on someone's life. Uh, speaking of the time when your video did go viral, take us to that day when you, you seen it go viral. What was going through your mind at that time? 
right. just off that one video. I think you mentioned something on one of your Instagram posts that it's, it just takes one shot, one change. One, one, one thing to change, to change your life, to, to give you the life that you desire. Hmm. So really, honestly, I was like, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> 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 is my job gonna see this and they gonna fire me <laughs> i was a re- i was a revenue officer you know i'm out you know right. doing collections so that was the first thing and i didn't even i i didn't know what views meant i didn't know what viral meant i just knew people were reaching out to me and they're like are you viral like i didn't i've never met anybody who went viral and i'm like what is that you know what does that mean like this is you know this is kind of scary like you know, and, and and then, you know, it, it was the comments and then people, you know, giving their opinion and it was it was overwhelming. It was it was really overwhelming. Like I kind of just sat down in a like a corner and kind of absorbed it because for me, I went to the negative before I went to the positive. Cause mm-hmm. I'm like, my job is gonna see this. You know, they're going to be like, no, you know, our social media standards is this. And right. it's, uh, it was, it was, it, it was, <laughs> it was, it was weird. But then when I, like I said, God has spoken to me and then the celebrity sharing. Mm. Then I was like, okay, okay, God. Okay, we do, we about to do this, God. Okay, you you already telling me. So immediately I had doubt. Like I said, I went to neg I went to negativity. But when God has you going somewhere, He is going to show you. He's going to show you in so many little ways. So when I was sitting there talking about, am I going to get fired? You know, maybe I should delete the video. Maybe God was like, Steve Harvey shared it. Michael Epps shared it. The funny of the funny start sharing it. Right. No, baby, you got something. I'm, I'm giving you that. Mm-hmm. This is this is to let you know to keep going. You, you, you are you, you are walking in your anointing, and so I kept going, and and I just kept growing. And I think at that time, I think I had like six thousand followers, and I went to like eighty thousand followers in in a in a day. Wow. You know, and so it's and it's just. And it's just how it's been because I never was intentional. I never focused on a number of followers, um, and like I said, and then all my you know everything just branched from there. So mm-hmm. it was it was like well, I, I tell you it was you know it, it, I, I didn't know what to think. You were like you you know you know sex trafficking. You shouldn't be saying that your daughter you know got picked up by a strange man, and um, <laughs> so it was kind of you know <laughs> it was it was overwhelming. Oh wow! And just just by that video, it just took you to a whole nother level. Kelly put you to a whole nother level, and that just made me think about when you said how you would just went from that negative to the positive. Made me think about when Jeremiah, um, when God came to Jeremiah, and when Jeremiah said, "I'm only a child," but God didn't see that. You know what I'm saying? It's like when we go to get when God comes up, reveals stuff to us, we make these excuses. Mm-hmm. Moses made an excuse that he couldn't speak. We did. He sent Aaron. <laughs> so <laughs> when um when Abraham wanted a child, you know, he looking at he was old. Oh, God didn't see that. Well, I, what I love about God is God don't God don't look at time. He's eternal. So he looked past our physical bodies. He look at the spirit. He looks at the heart of man mm-hmm. and woman. So when it comes to him, he's he's no excuse at all. It's like I'm gonna use you. I don't care how many excuses you bring to me. I'm still gonna I'm just gonna bring that answer. And I just okay. want to um, elaborate on that because it made me remind you what you were saying that hey, he still made a way and he still <laughs> keep making a way for you. And that's a beautiful thing to hear. So no excuses, ladies and gentlemen. Do not make excuses right. why you cannot do anything because you can. He's got to faith and believe that it can be attainable. So, Phoenix, you have anything you want to ask? Uh, I do, just going over what little bit we have. Um, I know a little bit that you make natural products for women. Um, so I wanted to ask about those products, but I wanted to go back to when you said that the doctors weren't listening to your symptoms and things like that. Did you go towards holistic or alternatives um, as far as treatment? 
God bless you. <laughs> <laughs> so say that again, the last part. So um, are you into holistic alternatives as far as treatment for different illnesses and, and, and just overall bodily, you know, um, about 50, 50, 40, about 50, 40, because a lot of, I have weaned myself off of a lot of medications due to natural remedies, but mm -hmm. there are also medications that I have to take that are pharmaceutical that allow me to sleep. Right. So, <laughs> so I, yeah, you know, people be like, oh, get off all your bed. I'm like, I didn't say that. Shit. Put them all up, right. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 know me, you, you guy gonna have to come down and sit down with me and tell me that one. So, um, right. uh, but yeah, so, um, yeah, so I'm I'm on a couple of medications that are, you know, heart related. And then I do do a lot of um, natural herbs. Um, I use natural products. I try to keep my products um, limited to, you know, clean, vegan uh, and mm -hmm. safe because, you know, um, you know, all the uh, sulfates and carcinogens that are in in products are dangerous. And, and the, you know, women use up to you know, 12 different products a day, which you would say would be about 168 different ingredients, most right. of them cancer. And as black women, we are least likely to go and find products to relieve our symptoms, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, therefore, I wanted to create something that was clean and safe, but also, um, provided a re remedy and help mitigate symptoms related to perimenopause and menopause. Mm. Women, black women experience menopause differently than white women because our stressors are different white women. So I wanted to, you know, create something because I saw that there was a lack, there was a gap and I couldn't find my products. And then I said, well, I want to make my own products. So I started making stuff in the kitchen for V dryness, you know, I'm saying V word, V dryness and, you know, and, um, you know, bladder, you know, issues with bladder and incontinence and those things like that, that people that yeah. is, I don't want to talk about, right? But they, they happen to us every day. So I wanted to open up a, a line of communication through my products so women could be able to be open about the, the because most women experience it, you know, everybody's right. experienced perimenopause and menopause, except, you know, except men, but... Yeah. So yeah. So that's why. That's why. Menopause. I thought it was just menopause. You come with the what is perimenopause? It's pre, of basically that. it's it's basically premenopause. It's so basically. Oh, so it's just like right before. Yeah, it's right. right before. So it's when you start having the you know get into your forties. You know, you start having you know, you know, you start mm -hmm. irritable, moody. You know, v dryness, low libido. You know, right. all these different things that you go through. You know, before your your before your period goes away. <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> I haven't hit my forties yet, but I'm not ready. Well, child is coming. I, I know. You, I would love to tell you something different, but <laughs> well, I'm proud to be. Well, I, I just turned forty back in April. I'll be forty one um, next <laughs> April. So taking care of my health is very important, especially being the age of forty. And and when you in a bit and when you know being an entrepreneur. And, that's, and I believe that when you're entrepreneur, you should take care of your health. You go hand in yeah. hand. You now, a lot of people want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't take care of their health. Yeah. I mean, how can you enjoy the freedom? Or their personal life, you know. Yeah, well, but then well, you're what, affected. Go ahead. It, it's the grind mentality, what I talk about. Mm -hmm. You know, people like, oh, if you're not, you know, if you're not sleep, if you're not awake, if you're not, you know, grinding 16 hours a day, then you're not working. Your business not thriving. <laughs> If you're not getting sleep, you know, yeah. more than eight hours a day, your likeliness of surviving to see your 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 business come into fruition is a lot. You know, like I said, it's more likely yeah. for you to die to see that you die to see that happen. Right. Because people are like they don't want to take care of themselves. They're like, and you and not all people, but you do have this people these people that say, Oh, you don't you don't need to sleep. You gotta keep working. You sleep when you're dead. Well, if you don't sleep, you'll be you, you're gonna get dead real wow. fast. Right. You gotta die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> really. You, you got to. And because um, we know we know we got twenty four hours within a day. And I know part of that having rest, 
you know, exercise and make sure we eat right, make sure we keep our body hydrated. I'm a big advocate for that. You got to stay healthy. You got to take care of your body. And out of that, your creativity will more flow as well, too. When you're in shape, your mind is alert, you're getting a properly rest. So I'm going to ask you this one. When it comes to your creativity, is it a special place you go to? Is it a room you hang out at? Or you just pick up something from anywhere and it's like, bam, I got it. So we were just talking about this today because when you have a creative mind, it it is hard. And, you know, and I was thinking about like, we were talking about Michael Jackson, for instance. Mm -hmm. He was on tour all the time. And he basically died because he was trying to protect his creative process by getting sleep. So he had someone giving him a sedative just so he could sleep, right? Mm -hmm. right. Ultimately, ultimately killed him, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, what I'm learning is because my mind is constantly going. Like it is constantly going like creativity doesn't turn off unless I'm asleep, right? And so I have made a conscious decision to make sure that I go, I haven't been able to do that in LA, I'm gonna tell you that. But when I'm at home, like I said, I have a husband who who does his best to protect me to the core, to make sure that, you know, you, you need to get to bed, you need to make sure you, you're taking your medication, are you drinking water, are you doing this and you're doing that. So I make sure I go to bed at a certain time and, and sometimes I, I try to go to sleep to a certain time, but I protect, I protect that. So there's no, I can't say there's a hundred percent specific place that I go. Cause I wake up and I meditate. I wake up and I, I, I worship, I meditate. I write down my ideas. I, I, I do affirmations, but I could be walking in the grocery store and I'd be like, you know what? Oh God. <laughs> but, you know, I could be anywhere in the, the, the creative juices are always flowing. And so, like I said, it, it, it could be tired. So a lot of prayer, a lot of support. I just, you know, I think the best thing for me is God preparing me and surrounding me for my, pur uh, protecting me, uh, protecting me around my purpose. Because I was at a point where I was getting all these brand deals. I'm trying to run my social media. I'm trying to just, you know, manage everything. And God could see that I was a little bit tired, you know, because he, know, he knows what's going on in your mind. And I'm like, oh, God, this is, you know, this is starting to get a lot. And I got an email one day from, you know, one of the oldest record companies that have been around that said, we want to support you. Mm. Now I have somebody yeah. running social media 24-7. I have, I don't, so all I have to worry about is my, the creative process. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's awesome. And I'm going <laughs> to keep a comments too in the comment session. A uh, big shout out to Anna C. She's the co-host here with me on Tuesday night. She said good evening to everyone. And also big shout out to Shay as well. Shay is also the co-host here on Walking This Way with Fat Boys. She said, yes, take care of, take care of yourself. And big shout out to my big sister as well. She's here in the DLW. Um, she said, having the supportive circle plays an important role in your healthy life regime, regimen. Let's, let's talk about that, the support. You know, I hear a lot of people that's in relationships, they feel like they're not being supportive. Their spouse or their significant other is not supporting them. You know, you hear the stories how hard it is that they want the guy dream. But they're not. Their their spouse is not supporting them when they sniff the other. How fortunate you are to have, like you see, your husband. He supports you in everything. Mm -hmm. Having that, how has that played a role in your journey, in your career, in your business world, with the support well, of your husband? Financially, really well. But because <laughs> I need I need his dollars first, right? Right. So, um, but it, it it to have somebody who sees your vision yeah. and has a passion behind your vision is so important because a lot of times I hear people, you know, they get divorced because, you know, one person, they feel like the, the relationship is being neglected. Um, they don't feel it, feel like they're getting enough support. 
spouses are jealous of each other. You know, it's, you know, one does, you know, they say the man doesn't want you to be more successful than, you know, than him. But for my husband, my husband has been, has, has always been the breadwinner. He's always taken care of us. He's always allowed me to have my freedom. So, but what he knows now is he want to be the house husband too one day. So, you know, <laughs> and he no problem with that. You know, he's, he's in his 50s and he deserves that. He knows that my success is his success. Right. So right. he's not worried about, there's no doubt in his mind that if I become to a, a certain level that I'm going to, you know, stray away or get my own money and go somewhere because our relationship was built on another foundation. So even before any of this, my husband, I am, I moved to Arkansas and my whole, my family and my kids stayed in Texas, but my husband supported that. And the thing he said to me is I would never stop you from reaching your goals. I'm going to always support that. And however we have to, 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 to make this work, we're going to make it work because I've been working, I've been traveling, and you've been taking care of the kids, you've been doing this. And even my children said, Mom, you deserve to be able to do what you want to do. And you mm-hmm. shouldn't allow anyone to stop step step on your dreams because you don't have the support. Right. And my husband knows I'm gonna do it anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> And you know, and that's the beautiful thing to know, really, because you have to- and I and I tell it when I, we had to talk about this show before, and I tell it to anybody from a man perspective. You know, you got a lot of guys nowadays. I don't say they call. I don't call them men. I call them males. Whatever you want to call them, they have an issue with women doing this or doing that. They think, oh, it's hard for it's not hard for the man. It's not hard for the woman. Give it an independent woman any day of the week. When I say an independent woman any day of the week, before I met her, she was paying her own bills. She had her own place, she had her own transportation, she had her own thing going on. What man don't want that in his life? Because he knows, okay, if something happened to me, God forbid, she knows the whole hair thing down. I don't understand why some guys run from that. Like for some reason, they want them a dumbfounded woman for some reason, someone they can control, someone they can manipulate. The Bible speaks about it, help me. So you want that help me along with you help along mm-hmm. this journey. I do believe that a marriage can be successful. I do believe a, a, a family can be successful. And it takes two willing people to make it take a, two willing people to make it work. Right. That man yeah. and that woman, they both on the same page. They don't want to court. The Bible says, I can't you walk together, except they agree. So it takes two willing people to make a thing work. I agree. So okay. that's why I love to have that your husband, y'all work together as partners, y'all life partners, y'all work together. And that's the most important thing. And people need to hear that, that, hey, if they could make this thing where I know I can make it work as well. Uh, Finch, anything you want to say? Uh, just as an independent woman, single out here, it is hard uh, because, and I had a guy explain it to me as that a man wants a woman who's readily available, <laughs> you know, um, I had a man tell me that I only had about 10, 10% capacity to deal with a man, you know, so if you are on your own and, you know, you, you, you have your nine to five and then you're, you're managing what you want to do and your entrepreneurial, you know, dreams and, and things like that, there isn't that much time, you know what I'm saying? You just stay focused on goal. Um, yeah. 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 I, I, you know, I believe it, you know, like I said, we are social media has has <laughs> people, you know, yeah. and so really all, so you hear all these different things and these expectations. Is even on the women's side, like I want a man to do everything, and right. and, and and I want to operate in my divine femininity. And I'm thinking at the same time, you know, that's well, you know, of course, you know, if. My man want to boss up, take care of me, and do that. He can because he does that really well, and he has. Right. But at the same time, I'm not going to work my husband to death mm-hmm. beyond his measure just so I can have a Gucci bag. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. Really? And right. so and, and we have all these, you know, it's, 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 just, it's just crazy now because 
you know, that I, I based relationships off of what I've seen in other people. You know, my parents have been married 44 years. You know, my grandparents were, you know, married years and great grandparents and most of my dad's sisters. Not saying these relationships were perfect or anything by any means, but you, you did see a solid two two people household, two person household who are working together and building things right. together. And you have to, and that, and that starts at the beginning. You already mm -hmm. have to set that foundation from the beginning, from the start. It's not something that in the middle you decide to do. You decide that it's we and we're working together. And if my husband had the same dream, right, then I'm going to support it, especially if I see that it's going to put us in yeah. the position that we want to be. Right. Who wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I, that's, why, that's why I never understood that because at the end of the day, both of y'all is winning. I don't understand why somebody got to feel like you outdoing me or you trying to gain more than me. At the end of the day, y'all both winning because y'all won. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it's <laughs> marriage. That's even friendships. You know, people will say, people, you know, it's this quote where it's like, people like, people want to see you do great until you're doing better than them. But what mm -hmm. kind of thing is that? Because for me, if I'm going to win, my friends is going to win. I'm going right. to pull them up. Just like, all together. Like, you think about like, you know, Quintana Brunson and you think about like Cheryl, Cheryl Lee Ralph and you think about Tiffany Haddish. When Tiffany Haddish made her success, when she got to the level of success that she did, she went back and she pulled everybody up who, who was with her when she started. Right. Cheryl Lee Ralph says, you, you can't succeed unless you have a Quinta, Quinta Brunson in your corner. So you have to be so solid in your relationships and so confident in your relationship that when somebody succeeds, you realize that you're going to flourish too. It's yeah. no envy or no jealousy because if my sister win, I know she's going to pull me up and I'm going to win too. I'm not worried about what God is doing for somebody else because one thing we can say for sure, people will say, God, I might not know what you're thinking. I might, know not, I might not know your heart, but God does. So whatever you're thinking, as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, God is going to keep bringing us up, right? So That's I right. think it's just about having a, a, a great try in anything that you do, you That's know? It. And I don't think that you can really <clears throat> thrive, even as a business, unless you have an employee, you have CEO, you have a CFO, you have administrator. You can't do anything by yourself. So you have to build a solid team at the beginning and, 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 and allow God to give you that discernment. Very true. So you know who stays and who goes. <laughs> Cause it. everybody can go. You can walk up the, you can climb up the mountain, but you might fall once we get to the top. Right. That's it. That's it. Even Nipsey Hussle said, um, everybody can't go. His circle, his circle got smaller. I mean, that the farther you go, the smaller your circle becomes. Yeah. Um, and you have to be okay with that. You got to. You got to be okay. Like you said, you got to be okay. And you like, everybody have that ride or die, that stand by you person with y'all through life. You know, in the Bible, you had David and Jonathan. You know, you had a lot of, you had, um, a lot of great people had that had a spiritual part person with them on the side. If you had more Day and Jerome, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you always going to have that stand that right hand man alongside you no matter where you go that's going to be faithful that's going to be loyal that's going to be dedicated but like you said we cannot do everything by ourselves that's why it takes two to make a thing work that song back in the day you take it to make a thing go right it takes two to make a thing work um another question i want to ask you about is uh i know you got some stuff lined up this week as well what's the next step what's the next stage for your brand what's the next move what's the next goal that you want to come because we know this is almost we're about to get to go into 2023 this is already a month of october so how how do you want to finish this year on out going into 2023 so so my goal is my short-term goal for the end of this year is i'm working on putting a comedy special together um and i'm working on you know getting my sets up to 30 minutes um, and being able to sell digital special and record a comedy album. Um, that is, that is my short-term goal. Long-term goal is I would, I would love to see my brand deals 
exceed, you know, $200,000. I want to be able to get the $50,000 sponsorship deal. Uh, and I know that the potential is there because I've, I've gotten some amazing sponsorship deals and worked with some amazing companies, but I would, I would love to secure some amazing deals. And like I said, my long-term goal is to be that award-winning Emmy receiving comedian you know, or like a personal brand because I do so much. Right. But, you know, um, I just want my brand to continue to grow and in, so, in good faith, you know, so. That's it. <laughs> and that's what's up. So are you going to be doing any type? I know a lot of times comedians, when they do stand up, they're eventually going to doing movies. So is that going, is that part of your goals as well? That is a, that is a, that is a goal. Um, we are, we are working on some stuff that I cannot disclose, but that is up. That is, that is ultimately what I would, I would like to do. I would love to go into acting, comedic acting. And when I say comedic acting, I'm looking at like, I would love to be that. I don't want to say, I always want to identify as someone else, but just to give you an example, like the female Will Ferrell, mm -hmm. like I, I, you know, I would love to, you know, be in a movie and then put on a production like direct you know a movie because i have so many amazing ideas so um so yeah there you know I, I think because i'm a comedian and what they say is that we have a lot of bandwidth when it comes to acting because there's so many you know notches to it and so i plan to take some acting classes and you know i'm doing everything that i can as you know as long as the lord says the same to, to just continue to, to grow and evolve, you know, evolving. Some people grow up, other people glow up. I'm glowing up, right? <laughs> so uh, so I want to continue to <laughs> And awesome stuff. And I know you have an event you have the gear to go have for this evening as well. So you yeah. have any final remark you want to leave with the listening artists here tonight because this will be on our YouTube channel, Spotify, and Anchor Podcast. So go ahead. Yeah, I just want to tell people there, despite your... Um, despite the things that have happened in your life, use it for a positive. Use it to help you evolve. Do not give up. Listen, if if I if I would have given up and I would have allowed my stroke to take over me, we wouldn't be having this conversation today, mm -hmm. right? And so you have to you have to take those transgressions. You have to take those struggles and you have to turn them into something great because God only selects a few to go to the war and he's and he selects the best soldiers he doesn't select the weakest soldiers so if God takes you through something and you're able to survive then you need to turn it into something great know that there's something great we don't have a test there's no testimony without a test there is no testimony so remember that I don't care what it is you know, there's people driving cars with no legs. There are people in the Olympics. There's so many people, regardless of who they are, they are making it. They mm -hmm. are they are hitters. And I want everybody to, to know that. You know, we tend to start feeling sorry for ourselves. And, and it happens. But how are you going to come out of it? You know? My dad used to be like, what are you crying for? And, and, that, and it meant a lot. And that's why I'm the strong person I am. You know, I, I go in, if I'm not first, I'm last, you know, and as long as you're living, you know, you can keep going. I say two words don't go together. Wake up and complain. How can you can wake up and complain? Right. Because my best joke is <laughs> on the other side of that is someone decomposing. So you can either be dead <laughs> or you could be happy to be alive and make it work. That's it. <laughs> and I hate to be I hate to be gruesome, but that's just how it is. I've I've lived it. I've 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 been close to death, so I know how important it is. Where you 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 gotta you gotta stand up. <laughs> you got to, and that's it. I mean that <laughs> that sums it up right there. And like I said we appreciate you hanging out with us. I know you have an event you have to get when well, you already ready for. So one for you ready to go. Plug in your social media outlets. How can people get in contact with you? How can they follow you on different media platforms? Yeah, I'm on the corner of just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Q, um, on all um, outlets, Pinterest, Snapchat, 
Instagram, YouTube, um, Facebook. I'm, it's all Hey Shanti Q. Hey, awesome stuff. And we appreciate you again. I know you're going to knock it out this evening. Most Once again, happy belated birthday to you. Thank and you. Enjoy your time in the West Cash Coast, out California. SQ, SQ DeVille. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome, <laughs> awesome. And we thank you again. We appreciate everybody hanging out with us. I appreciate Phoenix hanging out with me as well. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix, go ahead and plug in. How can people get in contact with you, different social media platforms? And for Hi. those who just tuning in, go ahead and introduce what you got going on as well. Okay. Uh, you can follow me on all platforms under Phoenix Sapphire 888. Um, I do want to talk about the event coming up on October 16th. And that is for domestic violence awareness with the new identity modeling. Um, so we're going to have a lot of speakers out there just telling their stories and giving that testimony. Um, I will be a speaker that day. So I'm very excited um, for that. Uh, we got um, one of my good friend artist, Young Said. He has his album released this weekend. So we'll be out at the Ice Palace on Saturday. And I want to give a big shout out to my team, DFW Music. Um, you about put tears into my eyes when you were talking about having that support and having that team. Um, because I, working with these individuals, and, and we're all individual artists um, that have come together, we go by DFW Music, just bringing that unity to the city um, and that we can all support each other. And when we pull up for each other's events and we have different things going on and each person is working, um, yeah, we got a lot of big things coming up um, and we want to just continue to give the city good energy. And that's really it for me. I'm just excited and I'm, I appreciate meeting you. Like, definitely. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Good awesome. luck in your endeavors and y'all keep Thank it up. You. you guys are making a huge impact. Like your the, the name. <laughs> uh, we pre appreciate it. Thank you as well. Also, like I said, uh, give a big shout out to Anna C. Uh, Coche, Kenny Primetime Williams to hang out with me on the podcast here on Tuesdays. I want to give a big shout out to Phoenix for accepting the invite to be a guest, special guest co host with me since I've been doing the shows on Wednesdays. And we're going to be back here next Tuesday night. Um, with another special guest. Matter of fact, I got an artist out of Milwaukee that's going to be on the podcast next Tuesday night as well. So looking forward to that. Um, a lot of great things coming about. A lot of great episodes. We've been booked up for the month of October. Uh, we know that it is um, with the Mystic Violence uh, Month as well and, of course, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I don't believe in domestic violence. If you use out there putting your hands on women, you deserve to go to jail. They just You deserve to go to jail because Right. That's that's just a pump move. I don't care how mad you get. If you get that mad, go buy a punching bag. Go punch on that or find some way to challenge your anger, but don't put it on don't put your hands on a woman. If you do that, you deserve to go to jail. I'm I don't care who you are, you deserve to go to jail. That's that's sick. It's not that serious, but we want to give a big shout out to the survivors, us the men survivors. We know that's something that no woman should want to go through. You know, you with a guy, you think this guy loves you, respects you, cherish you. And then before you know it, he hauls off and hits you like like you're another man. That's sad. It's sick. Well, that's not always the definition of domestic violence, though. It comes in many different forms. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what would be big about hearing different um, people's stories in it, because it goes from male to female. And you have the males that go through domestic violence and, and always appear to be the, the assailant rather than the victim. So it, it, it's just... Everybody is going through something on some level. Whichever the attack is coming in, it's not it's not so much the attack, but the, the coming out of. You know what I'm saying? And how we overcome whatever we face and, and go through. So, but yeah, yeah, locked up and, you know, male or female, lock them up. <laughs> yeah, because it's not that serious. And like I said, we want to yeah. thank everybody for hanging out with us as well. So we want everybody to have a great night. Enjoy your enjoy the rest of your evening. And also remember the graveyard. Everybody had one thing in common. They thought they were going to see tomorrow, and they didn't. So live life like it's your last. Party like a rock star, but do it in a positive way. And most important, what you need to do, take your favorite drink tonight, whether you're drinking coffee, water, tea, whatever you drink before you go to bed. Look yourself in the mirror. Give yourself a toast. Tell yourself, I love you. Tell yourself, I believe in you. Tell yourself that I'm going to make it. Tell yourself, I am iconic. 
tell yourself that I am going to fulfill my purpose. I am going to fulfill my destiny. I am going to fulfill the calling on my life. You tell yourself that you're going to make it. Don't limit yourself. Take the limits off yourself. Don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about what people say. Let me tell you something. People are going to talk about you whether you're doing good or bad. That's what that just, regardless, that's what it's all about. Be about your business. Damn what people say about you. Damn how they feel about you. They can kick rocks. You be the better version of yourself. You create your own empire. You create your own kingdom. People that say they're going to be with you, they walked out on you, they left you hanging, left you for dead, let them go. It is new people that are just waiting on you. Transition. Yeah. So don't take the limits of yourself. Believe in yourself, um, most importantly. Constantly working yourself, constantly. Not, you don't, don't do it just to impress people. You do it for you first. You invest in you yeah. first. You invest in you first the right people gonna come along beside you because they see you investing in yourself, they're gonna pour into you and they know you're gonna pour right back into them. Why? Because you they invested back in you, you're gonna invest right back into them. And everybody's gonna win at the end of the day. So I'm asking this to my special guest co-host. You have any final remarks that you want to leave leave with the audience here tonight. Just just do everything in balance. Let it be an equal exchange of energy in everything that you do. Don't just take yeah, that's it. awesome. That's <laughs> it. So we want everybody to have a great night. We're gonna be back here next Tuesday night here on Walking This Ways Impact with Podcast. Y'all have a great night. Keep your head up. Enjoy your wins tonight, whether with your loved ones, with your friends, whatever. And if you have a family, encourage your family. Parents, I'm not a parent, but I want to encourage the parents. Inspire your children. Last yeah. night, uh, Frankie the barber. He mentioned something on the show last night with his daughter. His daughter said she wanted to do music. He didn't discourage her. He didn't tell her no. He told her, go ahead and do it. Inspire your children. Parents, inspire your children. I know one day when I have my own family and I have me a wife one day, I want us to, to inspire our kids. I want our household to be inspired. That's just my mindset. That's just my imagination. I believe in stuff like that. People tell you that stuff don't work. It's a reality. That's your reality. I know my reality is because right. it's all about the I am. And that's what it's all about. But we're going to get off the air tonight. So we want everybody to have a great night. Going to see you next time here on the podcast. And most importantly, right. get the hard up, get thumbs up. I also have a star underneath the podcast tonight. So hit that star, get that star going. And we'll see you next time here on Walking This Ways Impact Podcast. Bye. <laughs>